Hi everyone, my name is Anne-Marie Cross, the podcasting queen. It is my pleasure and delight to be with Prosper today on his show, Online Prosperity Show. And Prosper told me to say to you that today I'm going to share with you how to show up or shut up. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the podcast queen herself. And Mary, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Prosper. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. Fantastic. If this is your first time you've ever seen or heard of Anne-Marie Cross, she is the podcasting queen, right? All she does is help people, you know, fix their brands and she's a communication strategist. She's also the CEO of the Ambitious Entrepreneur Podcast Network where they are really going out of their way to help you stand out, to be heard, and to be a person of influence. Now, did I say that right, um, Anne-Marie? Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's all about making an impact, making a difference in the world with your message and influencing those people who are you are here to serve and support. Understandable. Now, obviously, this is something that came to you at some point when you were probably finding your own voice. Can you walk us through that whole process? How did you end up becoming the podcast queen? That's interesting. To, to, to tell that story, I have to go back about nine years now to 2008. And that was when the global financial crisis hit. You know, worldwide, everyone was struggling. And at that time, I was working specifically in the career industry as a career consultant and resume writer or interview coach. And a colleague and I, who was also in the career industry at the time, were very disappointed at traditional media. They were talking about the doom and gloom, how everybody was you know, destined for failure because people were unemployed. Now, yes, there were a lot of challenges at that time. And at that time I was contracted to career ladders and I was supporting management accountants who were going for $2.50 an hour jobs. It was really frustrating and heartbreaking. So I said to my colleague, we need to be the voice of inspiration and hope to share with people, yes, things have changed. Things are no longer as easy as they were, and we need to change the approach. You need to change the approach in which you do job search. And that's what we did. We did that for two years, Career Success Radio. We impacted so many lives, met so many incredible career coaches that we interviewed on the show. And after that time, I decided that I would continue doing my own podcast focused in business, and I've been podcasting ever since, but with a fine message of inspiration and hope, helping people to achieve their full potential, whatever business they're in, whatever career they're in. Great stuff. So obviously with that inspiration and with that hope, when people were out of the doom and gloom, you now came up with this whole thing that um, is now helping other people to have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. What's been, how much have, have, has that impacted you as a person, knowing that what you're doing is actually changing lives? It's incredible. That drives me. It's tied to my why. You know, we often talk about our why and our purpose and our calling. And I certainly believe that. And I mean, I, as a career coach, I would help people identify their, their dream job, why they loved their work and felt found fulfillment. Because as we know, a lot of people in their careers at work hate their jobs and they can't wait till Friday. And I thought, that's ridiculous. If you're gonna spend all that time at work, you need to find something that's fulfilling and meaningful. Similarly to in business, a lot of people start a business, but if you ask them, do you get up every morning? Are you passionate about what you do? Is it tied to your why? It's like, I don't know. So yes, it absolutely does. And if I interview someone or if I share a tip or some information, that's going to inspire one, someone to think bigger, to take bigger action steps and to finally think, you know what, maybe it's possible for me to, then my job is done. And I can't tell you the emails that I get or if someone tweets or sends me something like, you know, online to say that, hey, you know, I've been inspired through your message. And it has happened, you know, right through to, from the country that you're from, Prosper, uh, you know, Zimbabwe, the Ambitious Entrepreneur Show, which is a podcast I still have, 
featured there for a season to inspire aspiring entrepreneurs. And now we're doing a weekly five minute from Monday to Friday inspirational business tip to inspire them. To think that, you know, my message and the message of my guests can impact the, the lives of others is incredible. That's what drives me, you know. And in, in actual fact, my goal through the collaboration with others is to impact positively and make a difference in the lives of 1 billion people. Wow. That yeah. is. Yeah. That, but, but that's what they're, you know, and you know what? It is absolutely possible because the people that you know and that they know and that they know that they know. And when there is a message that I believe inspires people to, you know, to think that things are possible because it is, you know, it's only our own mindsets and beliefs that holds us back and taking the right action steps then you know we can impact um the lives of, of many many people worldwide well i would like to take this opportunity <clears throat> on behalf of the whole of humankind because you're going to touch so many lives with your message and that's a really big and um really good ambitious um you know uh goal to have all right now in in the process of you doing that you have coined your work to become the podcast queen and obviously that helps you stand out now yep. somebody who's watching this right now might think they don't have that capacity to stand out on their own what sort of tricks or what sort of uh, tips would you give somebody who wants to who's got a message but is really afraid of uh, putting it out there um, as you have done and as you are going to continue doing impacting the one billion people yeah, you know, that's such an incredible question. I'm glad you asked that because I often pinch myself today and the journey through which I have now, you know, been dubbed the, the podcasting queen. And let me say, it's taken me about 18 months to two years to finally go, all right, I feel comfortable with that title because it was not something that I labeled myself, but rather what people around me, my guests, my colleagues, they would say, oh, you need to talk to anne Marie about that. You know, she knows everything about podcasting. She's the podcasting queen. So it wasn't till I started to hear that more and more that I thought, well, I need to embrace this. But here's the lesson. To, to be learned in, in that is that throughout my career even in my business you know through working with uh, professionals and executives and then entrepreneurs I never really positioned myself and just had that business as podcasting to help people and it's only been in the last I would say 12 maybe 18 months that we've started to transition to do that full time but here's the beauty of it I have always loved it. It's something I've been passionate about. And in actual fact, I know the term's been used before, but it really does encompass what's happened to me. It's the accidental niche. How many times do we uh, don't, not recognize where we are brilliant, where we stand out, where we shine, where we are in our zone of genius, because often we take it for granted because these skills, these abilities become, you know, so natural to us. And it's not till we start to observe the comments and the reflections that people reflect back to us that we can start to see, well, maybe that is something that I'm quite good at. And if we start to recognize that and blend that into what we do, and maybe there are some certain things that we do really well, that is when we step into something that we can own, we can claim with confidence, not arrogance, but a level of confidence that allows us just to do what we love doing and do it well. And I think once you start to do that, people start to look, people start to listen, and then you can influence the lives. So it's, it's interesting that you should say that. It really is something that if I can say I fell into it because I just love doing what I'm doing, people would say to me, you've got a great voice. I hated listening back to my podcast back in 2008. My colleague then, who was the co-host, he was a muso from many years ago. And we used the platform Blog Talk Radio. And he would often listen and say, the sound quality is shocking. Have you listened to it? I go, no, I don't like listening to us because, you know, I cringe at what I say and because we know we, we can be quite self-critical. But, you know, listen to those cues, listen to what people say, and then eventually you'll come, you'll, des you'll design, if you will, that niche because it's something that you're already doing well and you can encompass, you know, and bring other things into it. Like I did the podcasting, the communications, the branding, all of that to now fully package that into what I'm offering. And hence that's why I guess people started calling me the podcasting queen. So yeah. Great stuff. <clears throat> you know, you know what I heard in, in all of that, 
I heard you saying just start and the how will find its way. Would I be correct in, in, in how I've just maybe summarized all of that? Because you just started doing something and you, you, you found your voice. While you found your voice, you found your platform and then everything else just started coming together. But other people are just crippled by the mm. beginning. Yes. All right. All right. So obviously <clears throat> your message here is just start and everything else will, will fall in place, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing that I think is very important is if you identify what really stirs your soul. So there's two ways that I have found that you can identify your passion because your passion is what drives you. You know, it's often something that's very connected to who you are, whether you are speaking to a family member, a friend, a colleague or a client, it drives you. So there's two things. What are you passionate about? What really fires you up? But what also, if I can say the word, what pisses you off? Because in the, in the middle of that, will um, be indications of what your why is. And so for me, my why and my, what I call your inner brilliance, is to inspire hope and possibility. That's what I mentioned why I got angry at the traditional media who were talking about doom and gloom. It was impacting people's beliefs in themselves that they could get a job. And so that sparked my, the fire, it ignited that passion or that, you know, that, that annoyance, if you will, to drive me. But it also... On the positive side, I love to inspire people. So if you connect it with that, then that is going to pull you forward. It's going to get you out of being scared and out of the fear because it, you know, it's it's bigger than you. You cannot not do it. It's just who you are and what you're meant to do. Does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense. As obviously earlier, we were talking about how you have a mission to impact a billion people. So obviously mm -hmm. you're waking up every single day and you're anchoring your mission that those billion people have to hear your voice. And that's pretty much how it, it is all working out. Okay, so now that somebody has found their voice and now that somebody has found their passion and their why, in a sea of content like these days, how do they then get hurt? Yes. Well, I think that's where you've really got to identify what makes you quite unique. And often it's the experience that you create in just being you and showing up, being purposeful and being intentional. And so for me, if I'm communicating, I always think, you know, even because you talked about the 1 billion people, but I look at who can I impact today? That might be one person if I'm speaking with someone or commenting on, you know, social media, or it might be a group of people who I'm presenting to but it always starts off you know is what I'm going to say going to inspire it has to be inspiring for me I'm if I'm gonna rant online there has to be a message there has to be a message which could change opinion or you know um, spark debate but with a positive outcome and sometimes you know people will have, will have to disagree to disagree or agree to disagree but we do so with respect so I think it's really being clear on your message how you're going to deliver that and be very consistent in the way that you do do that across all platforms. Because quite often I see people um, water down their message because how they show up on Facebook videos in you know in person is quite different. It's disjointed, and I think you know, for anyone to become known as an influencer in their field, there has to be that consistency of the message and constancy of that message too. So does that help? Oh, no, it does. It does put it all in, in, in perspective because um, I don't know if you you did mention that nine years ago, you know, all was doom and gloom on, on online and, and, and in the in the press. Also, at that time, there used to be sitcoms like Seinfeld or Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. All right. Mm -hmm. And in those uh, sitcoms, the people that were the main actors are still doing what they're doing today. And all those people that had to assume another character. All right. All the other supporting acts, George and all the other people, they probably have checked into some rehab or have checked into some sort of mental institute because their character is not aligned to the person who they are. So yeah. what you're saying right now is, is some people um, want to assume a personality which they're not. Mm -hmm. And when it then comes to the crunch, that is not in alignment and that's how you you know you you lose your voice you lose your authenticity and people don't want to continuously follow and then you stop being heard okay yeah, so if, I, if i've heard you correctly would that be um yeah. the thing right yeah. so it's 
it's been nine years now. Mm-hmm. And obviously you, your mission is to put your word out to, um, you know, a billion people. Now, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it doesn't work? It, I know that I am impacting people, but this is a collaboration, you know, it, and so the Ambitious Entrepreneur Podcast Network and, and that whole um, network of other people, it's together, you know, and I think it's together. For me, it's not even a possibility that it won't work because ultimately my goal is to inspire hope and possibility and help people achieve their full potential. So whether it's one, whether it's 10, whether it's 100, it's fantastic because here's the thing, they will go out and inspire and empower other people. It's not just me, but all of us. And so, you know, yeah, just one person will tell that person who will tell 10 and so on. So it's just not a possibility because it is a possibility. Does that mean that makes sense? It does make a lot of sense. That's where I really wanted us to drive this conversation because some people stop at the first hurdle. All right. Yeah. And, and you've been doing this, you know, for the nine years and some people just go in for nine days and they're like, Oh, I'm giving up. So that's, yeah. that's where we really I'll tell you, has, has entrepreneurship been um you know and, and in business the hurdles absolutely i have had some real doozies in fact you know prior to this um i had the worst business failure ever it was a partnership i won't go in all to all of the details i mentioned i talk about it in one of my podcasts but that worst experience i have ever been through has now that i look at upon reflection has been the best because had i not gone through that I would never have really picked myself up and gone, my goodness, I really need to do some deep reflection and thinking here. And that has given me the courage now um, to, yeah, think even better, bigger, uh, and surround myself with people that I know will lift me up. And uh, yeah, so when I think about failures, absolutely, there's challenges all the time, but you know what? You just need to power through them, go around them, under them, whatever you need to do. Because that message that you're here, that calling, that purpose, your why, you know, you've been given that for a reason. So don't let anyone or anything stop you from getting out there and just doing what you can. Every little step is going to get you closer to your goal. The more I listen to you talking, the more I'm just drawn into your message and I'm just really want to see how I can also help impact those um you know one billion people but Mm -hmm. obviously you do have a platform and as far as we all know they say that public speaking or speaking in front of an audience is next to death now what's your strategy of being so eloquent and delivering your message and really overcoming your lack of self-confidence of speaking because that might be one other thing that stops people dead in their tracks Mm. it's interesting you know for me and i have to be honest i have always loved speaking in public even at the age of three i remember standing up on my kitchen table my parents (laughs) kitchen table and kind of directing people and letting you know my family know what needs to be done but for me though believe it or not i am an introvert so an extroverted introvert so i can get out there and i can be the star i can present and i love to do that but then i need to kind of go back in my shell and refresh and re-energize myself but i think i mean there definitely is or some people who really get fearful of that and often it's because of these things the fear of being judged fear of making a mistake maybe not knowing your material as well as you need to but guess what it's getting out there and continuing to deliver your message because the more you start speaking about it the more you start to allow yourself to get out there the more the easier it becomes and you know what if you are just there are going to be some people who connect with you who relate with you and then there's going to be some that don't and that's good the more clearly defined you get in your message you will divide opinion and you know what those people who don't really understand or get you that's okay that they're for other people there are trolls and that kind of thing too well you don't even give them the time of day they're just you know let them stick stay in their stuckness (laughs) and you know because you really are there And, and here's what i also say to people when you're connected to your why and you really think about inspiring other people or being supporting to other people, then if you're not out there sharing your message, the people who you are here to serve, the people who need to hear your message, they're not going to hear that. So somewhere, someone 
is waiting for you. Start off small, you know, you don't need to get out in front of 10,000 people. Just get out in front of a small group and continue to do that. And the more you will build your confidence um, and, yeah, and, and as you continue to do that. And, you know, was I as confident as I am now if I get in front of a group years ago? No, but I just continue to, to, to get out there. All right. So you've probably been watching this show right now and you've heard how Anne-Marie went through all the adversities in, in the nine years of her work and actually changed something that was, you know, impacting a lot of people with doom and gloom into something really positive. Now, you might be an entrepreneur, you might be a solopreneur or a small business person, or maybe you're working in a corporation. Anne-Marie is going to be helping you to navigate and stand out of the noisy, competitive and destructive marketplace that's out there. But you might be wondering, how can I get a hold of you, Marie? Even I don't know. So let's find out. Marie, how can people get a hold of you? Because obviously right now they might be impacted. They really want to move on and maybe start a podcast or just really scream on top of their voice. But they might just need you to push them over the edge and, you know, to, to, to have their voice heard. How can people get a hold of you? The best way is just to go to my website, annemariecross.com. So A N N E M A R I E Cross C double C R O S dot com. From there, there's links to the podcast network, to the podcast, there's articles, lots of different resources that people can connect to and tap into, as well as other contact details if you want to ring, email, and that kind of thing. And all the social platforms are there too. Great stuff. Well, obviously, like I've already thanked you on behalf of all the billion people we're going to impact. I really hope maybe three people that are watching this video right now are going to hit you up. I will put your, um, you know, your contact details in the storyline at the bottom there. And if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to ask Anne-Marie and um, really um, you know, connect with her because she's on a mission and she can also help you be, do and have a business that's profitable and in, enjoyable. Now, do you have any other last words? I know we've heard you, but obviously your mission is to get heard. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I think for people who may be thinking, well, I don't really have a message. I don't really have something that's going to impact the lives. All of your experiences, your knowledge, all of that, somewhere in there is a lesson. Somewhere in there is a golden nugget, an insight, a piece of wisdom that needs to be shared with someone else to impact their lives. Every single person, even you, has a voice that needs to be heard so that you can impact others. All right. Obviously, from what you're saying, all I can do is conclude by saying that your life story and your life experience has greater importance and market value than you could ever possibly imagine. People like Anne-Marie can bring your voice out there. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Anne-Marie, thank you so much. You're for welcome. Time. Thank you. Great stuff. Thing. I want you to introduce yeah. this show. Um, obviously, you're going to say, hi, my name is Amory Cross. I'm the podcasting queen and you're going to be watching the online prosperity show with Prosper. And today I'm going to be telling you about how to put up or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Do you want me to say that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the that's the that's the introduction to the show. So if people don't okay, watch, okay, that's the day I'm going to show you how to put up or how to what? So put up or shut up? Oh, uh, put up or shut up. <laughs> and he told me to say that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't.